Hello, all you Mitutoyu fanboys and fangirls out there. What I have here is a Mitutoyu model ID-C1050EB and a code number or order number of 543-466B. Uh, uh, the 543 is the series number, the uh, subsequent numbers are the variations, and the model number I believe refers to the exact model this actually is. That's kind of the the real um, key number when you're trying to find these things. Now this dates from about 2009. So I had issues trying to track down the exact manual for this exact model and variation. Uh, this head unit here was actually used on a number of different Mitutoyu indicators, some uh, 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 less length in terms of travel, others in a more conventional uh, form factor, maybe an inch or a half an inch of travel. Um, so by finding another variation of an indicator that used this particular head unit, I was able to reverse engineer and kind of figure out uh, close enough how those other models and variations worked, enough where I could go ahead and present the information that I've learned here to all of you. Um, because there's some non-intuitive ways in which this thing works, and I think it'd be helpful to have somebody walk you through it. So let's go ahead and, and jump right in and do that. So the first thing to note here is that this has a full two inches of travel um, from basically zero all the way to just over two inches, which is fantastic. So in its most basic form, that's what you can use it for. Now, this particular thing was designed more, I think, for a QC operation, so it has some features in it that um, normal indicators don't necessarily have, such as tolerances and presets and things like that. And I'll go ahead and show you how to use those, but I'll walk you through the basics of how to basically use it in a dial indicator setup. So, right off the bat, you'll notice that it's in, there's nothing on display on the screen except for the digits. This is what they call the absolute mode. Essentially, when you put the battery in this thing and you zero it, this is what the indicator thinks is zero. So anything you do from that zero portion will read up and so forth like that. Now, in my case, I use this on my quill, on my mini lathe, and so I actually want to have it read the going this way. The number is counting upwards as I extend the quill and the chuck outward. Now, you'll notice, though, that what it's actually doing is counting down. So here's where the, uh, the comparator, comparator mode comes into play. I can essentially go to my full contraction, hit my zero, and now you'll see the numbers are counting up. So now I can say, oh, I'm about, you know, 68, uh, uh, 68 out there and 70 and so on and so forth. And so there we go at full extension. You'll notice though there's a negative symbol here, um, which makes sense because essentially, as far as this is concerned, I'm going from my full retraction all the way out to maximum extension. However, Mr. Tolio has provided an option to change that. So, by hitting this button here, the direction change, you'll notice it says reverse and the minus sign has gone away. So now, even, even though the numbers are reading the same way, they're, go, they're counting up, the minus sign is gone and it's a little more intuitive. So now for me, this is great because now as I'm extending, I know exactly where I am in relation to the, uh, the end, tail stock and the quill. So that's really great. And the cool thing is that it'll remember your zero and your direction depending on whatever you set it at, if you turn it on and turn it off. So that's great. And the cool thing is you can zero it anywhere in the world, anywhere along the travel. So if I want to zero it right here, I hit my zero there and I'm good to go. So that's fantastic. Now let's say you want to get back to your absolute mode. All you have to do is hit your zero absolute button, hold it for two seconds. That goes away, the INC goes away, and now you're back into the regular uh, absolute mode. And again, you can also tap off your reverse button and you're back to the way it was. So, uh, let's talk about how the tolerance features work. Well, for example, let's say you've got a part and uh, our parts, and you want to make sure that they're within specification. You've got a high tolerance and a low tolerance. What this will allow you to do is program those tolerances in, so when you're taking measurements, uh, you'll know if your part is in tolerance. Now, I've gone ahead and pre-programmed my tolerance levels in, so I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like. To activate it, you hit your tolerance button. It takes you right into the tolerance editor here. So now this first thing is telling me what my upper tolerance is. Tapping it again tells me my lower tolerance and then tapping it there allows it to be ready to use. So I'll just show you what that looks like there. So right now you'll notice the down arrow is indicating that I'm in my lower tolerance or out of, out of my lower tolerance. But as soon as I'm within my tolerance level, that uh, little uh, zero open circle comes into play. That tells me that anywhere within my tolerance will show that zero. And as soon as I exceed it, 
I get the up arrow. So that's a great way to just kind of, you know, quickly take apart and QC it if you've got this mount in a stand or some kind of fixed situation. Now, the cool thing is that, again, this will remember that, power on, power off. It'll remember both your tolerance and your fact that you've got it enabled. And you can change your tolerance um, at any time. So it's a little counterintuitive to how, to how you would do that. I'll just go ahead and show you. So the first one is your upper tolerance level. You can see the upper up arrow is blinking. The way you start editing the digits is you hold down that tolerance button, the TOL button. You'll notice that the next, the first uh, digit there starts to blink. In this case, it's the plus. So you could change that to minus if you wanted to, but I'm not going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and keep it at plus. Hold for about two seconds. You'll notice the next digit displays. I'll hold again. I'm going to go ahead and press the tolerance button quickly to go up in numbers. So you'll see here my numbers are going up. And if I want to go back to, say, 1, which I'm going to program in now, I have to go around full loop. There's no way to go back a digit or two. So now I want to take that uh, point 1 out. So I'm going to go ahead and press and hold. That starts blinking. And i got to go through the cycle of getting this back to, there we go. And then press and hold. Press and hold. Now once your uh, upper level there starts blinking, press that again. And now you're editing your lower tolerance level. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. Again, same process. A little bit tedious here. This is not really designed to be changed sort of on the fly. Generally speaking, you know, you might do a, a QC with a part that's, you know, maybe 100 parts or something, and they all need to match the same tolerance. So you would go ahead and just, you know, set this and forget this uh, to an extent. So I'll go ahead and just program this into 50 thousandths, and we'll just uh, go from there. So again, press, hold, cycle through, and once your lower starts blinking, press your tolerance level there, and you are ready to go. So now you'll see here, there we go. So anywhere between that lower, the 50 thousandths, and one inch is intolerance. That's a pretty pretty crazy tolerance. You know, a lot of slop in there, but hey, guess what? This is just a just to show you that you can set this however you want it. You can even do the tenths if you wanted to. It only goes between zero and five, but you know, if you wanted to get down in the, into the into the dirt with that, you really could. And then to disable it, uh, you just tap it, and now you're back into uh, normal mode there. And at this point, you can then go ahead and, if you wanted to, you know, change your settings from inches to millimeters, and use any of the other features that you might want to use. Uh, zero it anywhere you wanted, reverse it, and it all is in memory here. So again, very handy going back to absolute mode and turning off reverse. So, now you may have noticed with the tolerance option when I went to the editor that yeah, I can, if, I, if I wanted to, I could have entered in you know, maybe like uh, a two or three or four or, or heck, even nine inches or 10 inches. Now there's a way that you can basically tell this thing, hey, start your indicating and your counting at a certain existing preset number. So for example, if you've got say three inches of, of part and you want to measure above three inches, maybe you're, you know, your part's got a feature and you want to say, oh, you know, how tall is that feature? Well, you can program this thing essentially to tell that, to do that math for you. You do that by hitting the preset button once. You'll notice that the preset, the P is flashing there. And much like the tolerance level, you edit the same way. You press and you hold, that flashes. We'll go ahead and we'll change it to three inches. Yeah, four inches, there we go. Uh, again, if you miss a number, you've got to cycle back through it, so it is what it is. In this case, I'm pressing and holding, it's advancing to the next digit, and then once the P flashes, I can then let go, hit the preset, and now you'll see it's reading four inches. Even though I'm at my full extension, it reads four inches, and so if I press the plunger in, you'll notice it just counts up from there. And so again, kind of a quick, convenient feature to take into account if you've already got a measurement happening here. Maybe you're writing things down quickly. You don't have to do the math in your head about adding, you know, four inches to then whatever reading you get once the plunger's moving. This allows you to do that. And so I believe you can set it to 99 inches, I think, um, if you wanted to. And as I said before, the tolerance levels that you set come into play with your preset. Now you'll notice, though, that when I enable the preset, um, in this case, you'll see the, the upper levels displayed because nothing's going to happen between 
here and there because everything is above my upper limit of, of I think it was one inch. So just something to know about, be, be aware about. So you again, if you wanted to, you could program in your upper limit to be four or five inches and that would take its cue from whatever your preset was. So again, just something to be aware of and, uh, and it, that remembers whether you're turning on or turning off too. So if you want to get rid of that preset, you have to go through and remove that digit to get it back to where you want. So we'll just clear it. And then you gotta hold and press and then go through that whole process. Again, not really designed to be a quick change on the fly kind of a situation, um, but that's how it works. So that's really it. Um, again, uh, this guy uh, came with the magnetic base. In this case, uh, it already had it, So, but if you wanted to, you could go ahead and add and use a standard indicator back for this guy, the same sort of screw pattern here. So if you wanted a, a lug or something or a flat back, you could just go ahead and put that on there and you'd be good to go. But for me, the magnetic part is ideal because I could just mount it to my lathe and I'm good to go. It also came with this plunger uh, attachment here uh, or tip. And so that saves me having to you know, try and fabricate something to make it from, from flipping off and it's just great. So this thing was just a, a perfect find, a perfect buy. And the head actually does rotate. Um, you can see here, I believe it goes like a 300 degree rotation. Now for me though, I'm gonna leave it right where it is because for me, I'm having this oriented and looking at it in this fashion. And so I won't mess around with it, but that's how it is. It takes the standard SR44 batteries like a lot of indicators do. Uh, and so, there you have it. So if you happen to find one of these on eBay, snap it up because it's just a fantastic uh, bit of kit here. And if you see any other versions of this, uh, take those as well because again, now you know if you find one that looks just like this, uh, you can probably apply it, apply the knowledge you've learned here to that indicator. So, But do be aware there are variations on these and so sometimes this might say data or these buns may differ. It may look very similar, but they are different beasts. So. The stuff I say here does apply to this model only, but uh, the general principles may apply elsewhere to other models. So there you have it. Thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks so much.